So you're deciding if a chameleon is the right pet for you. I'm going to give you five reasons why you should not get a pet chameleon. The first reason is if live bugs freak you out. A chameleon's diet consists of live bugs exclusively. They will not eat dead bugs, they will not eat freeze dried bugs, they will not eat fruits and vegetables, they only eat live bugs that should be part of their diet that's going to include things like roaches crickets worms flies all that good stuff and if that freaks you out or if you refuse to feed your chameleon roaches or live bugs then a chameleon's not a good pet for you this is a key part of their diet and honestly one of the biggest things that i had to get over before i decided i want to get a pet chameleon roaches freak me out but i found comfort in knowing that Doobie roaches, which is the most common roach used to feed chameleons, there's a bunch of other kinds, but they can't climb smooth surfaces and they can't breed at room temperature. So that made me feel way better. And I also use tongs <laughs> to pick up my bugs, like I don't touch them with my hands and I keep them all in their containers so I don't actually interact with the bugs. But you do have to deal with purchasing the bugs and dealing with the bugs and if a bug escapes, like you have to be okay with that. Maybe you're gonna find a roach in your knife block on your kitchen counter. Now if I'm speaking from personal experiences, maybe I am, but that um, may or may not have happened and you just have to be okay with that possibility that like they're not gonna just breed in your home that's not possible because of the temperatures but you do have to be okay with live bugs and if you're not then you may want to consider a different pet secondly if you don't have a reptile vet near you this is really for all reptiles but definitely true for chameleons i would not want to get a pet that i didn't have medical treatment for so i have a local reptile vet that i researched prior to getting a chameleon because the last thing i would want is for my chameleon to get sick and for me to not be able to take it to someone who's able to care for it too often i see keepers who have chameleons that have issues that require vet treatment and i'm like hey I can't help you like you need a vet and like I don't have a vet where I live and the chameleon ends up passing away because of that. I'm not saying the vet has to be 10 minutes down the road, maybe they're a couple hours away, but I would highly encourage you to make sure that you have a reptile vet that has chameleon experience before committing to getting a chameleon as a pet. Third, and this is a big one, you want a pet that you can hold all the time. If that's the case, then a chameleon is not the right pet for you. They are solitary creatures, they do best when left alone. I always say that they're a look at pet, very similar to a pet fish, where they're very, very cool to look at and go, ooh, ah, you have this awesome enclosure. They're amazing creatures to watch eat and climb around and their colors are beautiful. But I'm not snuggling with my pet or my chameleon on the couch. I'm not getting any emotional connection from my chameleon. I may love them with my whole heart, but that's not reciprocated. It's not in the chameleon's nature. If you think about it, when a chameleon hatches on its egg, out of its egg, it's on its own. From day one, it has no relationship with its parents or its clutch mates. They are solitary animals that go off and do their own thing. That's very, very different than pack animals, say like wolves, who survive by being together. So they're able to form those bonds similarly to humans and dogs and cats, right? Very different than reptiles and chameleons that are solitary creatures that survive by being on their own. As a result, this isn't an animal that's gonna wanna come out and build that bond with you. That's not to say you can't handle your chameleon, but my interaction with my chameleons realistically is like maybe three or four times a month, I will, they will come crawl into my arm on their own terms, and they crawl into my arm, and then I bring them over to my fake tree that I have, and then they climb right off. That is as much as I interact with my chameleons. Now you probably see on social media more pictures and videos of people handling their chameleons, and while there are some chameleons that have a lower fear of humans than others, do not go into a pet chameleon with that expectation. It's not gonna be an animal that you walk around the grocery store with. It's not gonna be an animal that you go shopping with. It's not gonna be the animal that you hang out with in your apartment all the time because they need to be inside their enclosure so they have the correct environment and UVB exposure, all that good stuff. The fourth consideration is money. So a lot of people don't realize how much upfront cost there is with a chameleon and people aren't willing to spend a lot of money on the setup. They wanna try and cut corners or do it cheaply, but honestly that's gonna come at the cost of your chameleon's health. So if you're not willing and wanting to spend money upfront and spend more money on the setup than the animal, then a chameleon may not be the right pet for you. The reason for this is you will see a veiled chameleon for anywhere from 50 
$250, which like isn't bad, right? That's a relatively fair price. But when the cost of the proper enclosure is triple, quadruple the cost of the chameleon, people have a really hard time committing to getting the proper enclosure, especially if you've made mistakes along the way and you have to purchase things again. You have to get a different enclosure and you have to get a different UVB light. And you have to get a different misting system. So now you're paying double than what you did before. And this little animal only costs $70. So why am I spending $500 to set it up? But that's the reality of chameleon keeping is there is a huge upfront cost. But the reoccurring maintenance cost isn't that much, right? You're just paying for bugs, replacing the bulb, water, veggies. It's not too expensive once they're all set up, but the enclosure, the lights, to do it correctly does get a little expensive. And it is going to cost more than the animal, so that's something that you have to be okay with. So if you don't have the budget and the resources and the finances to set that all up, then a chameleon may not be the right fit for you. And going back to talking about the vets, a vet bill for a chameleon can range anywhere from hundred dollars to a thousand dollars and blood work is usually around two to three hundred dollars alone i i paid 275 dollars for neptune i got blood work for him one time and that was three hundred dollars i paid more in blood work than i did for the chameleon and not to say you can't shop the sales and be balling on a budget and make your own enclosure things like that you just have to be able to have the finances to support this animal whatever way that they need the last reason I'm going to not recommend a command as a pet for you is if you don't want an animal that takes up a lot of space. The minimum enclosure size for a command is 2 feet wide by 2 feet deep by 4 feet tall. And that whole enclosure is sitting on top of a table that's also probably 2 feet tall. So really it's like 6 feet tall and 2 feet wide and that's the minimum size for a chameleon. So if you're not able to provide that space. Workman, I see a lot of people try to put them in their bedroom, which is fine, but they still need this size enclosure. Or they have parents who are like, hey, I don't want a giant enclosure in my living room. Then a chameleon may not be the right pet for you. They do take up a lot of space. I personally enjoy because I think this is super, super cool. And I basically have a mini rainforest in my living room, but it's not for everyone. And I totally understand that. But something that you need to consider when thinking if a chameleon is a good pet for you. Well, this is by no means a comprehensive list with all the reasons, it's definitely a good starting point. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Leave me any questions or comments down below. Let me know what you think are reasons why someone should or should not get a pet chameleon. I'm curious to know. And feel free to subscribe so you know when I post a new video, I'll probably be doing one on reasons why you should get a pet as a chameleon. So be on the lookout for that. And feel free to follow Neptune and all my chameleons on social media at Neptune the Chameleon. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day. Bye. I wasn't recording that. That's lovely.